Hey Notion gang, today I'll show you how to add webhook to your Notion workspace. I have a very simple setup here. I love implementing checkbox. Checking off a box when I've completed a task gives me a very lovely, satisfying dopamine hit. But I also want to be able to see the status of a task that I'm working on. So I implement both checkboxes and statuses within my task database. Wouldn't it be lovely if when I check off the checkbox, it changes the status to complete. Now we can't set it up to trigger when I check off a checkbox, but I can create a button that has a link to a webhook that will trigger a scenario to do that for me. So let's go ahead and set this up. I make, you've seen me do this a dozen times. I'm gonna go ahead and add our webhook. Make sure to choose custom webhook. And then I'm just gonna name this task complete. Apparently I've used this before. Okay, and save. Let's copy address to clipboard. Let's create a button. Okay, and resize this, make it a little bit smaller. And title this task complete. Complete it. I'm gonna bold this to color, Just change it to green. I like that. All right, and now let's add a link. I'm just gonna paste my link here. And done. So now we have a makeshift button of sorts. I'm gonna run this over and and make just to test it. Now you're gonna see when I click on this, just like with any other hyperlink, it's gonna open up a web page. Okay, you see that it opened up a page in my browser that says accepted. So we know that our webhook is working. Close this. Now this is the one caveat that I have discovered a workaround with. If you use these webhooks enough, if you implement it this way, this could get annoying having this pop up all the time and having to close it, but hopefully the coolness factor weighs out on the annoyance. All right, so we see there is no data here. Um, we're just using this webhook as a trigger. And that add our Notion module. And I'm going to use a search objects. I'll filter here. And we're looking for our done checkbox equals true. Once it finds those true checkboxes, we will update them. Update those items rather. Let's map over the page ID. And I just want you to change the status to complete. Uh, let's save this and turn it on. I've gone ahead and I've changed the status of some of our, prop of our items here to in progress. And I've checked off task one and check task three. So let's cross our fingers and click our button. And our web page should open up in my second browser so you won't see that worked. May I suggest, depending on how many items you have in your task database, you don't want it to go through all of the items, you know, go through all the past completed items. So what I would do is I would add a sort to my search objects module and sort about by the last time edited it and do it from descending. So the most recent to the earliest and then make sure to set my limit somewhere where it's reasonable. I would also add an additional filter to exclude any task whose status name is done. Before we move on to our next scenario, if you're finding this information helpful, please give it a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe. Adding webhooks to database items. So we're gonna start off with a formula. And within my formula, I'm going to add an open quote, paste my webhook, close my quotes, and done. 
And now you see I have an active hyperlink and you know that it's active because it's underlined. And when I click on the link, it calls our webhook. This time, I don't wanna just trigger our webhook. I want to actually send information. To send information via our webhook, we will need to provide make with a key and value. For our key, I will name it ID and the value is our actual page ID. Set up our webhook to send information. At the end of our webhook link, I'm going to put a question mark, making sure that I stay within my quotes. And then I'll use a plus sign to indicate that I'm adding on to this text. And then within quotes, my key, which is ID, equal sign, close the quotes, and another plus sign, we use the ID function all the way down at the end here. And make sure to close your parentheses. And now we're done. Now that I'm back at the table, let's go ahead and click on our webhook link. And our page popped up, so we know that it sent data. Let's go to make. And there we have a little thought bubble and you can see we have our page ID. I have a get database item module where I'm mapping the page ID to get all the information from that task. And then I'm sending that task to my client's database entitled Clark, sending the name and the status. Okay, now let's test this out. I'm going to send task two over to Clark database. And there it is. And just to test out filter, let's try to send task one. And nothing happened, so our filter worked. What if I want to send more than just my page ID? Again, I can add on to this webhook. So I'm going to incorporate within my formula, add another plus sign, and then I'm going to use an ampersand within quotes to tell, make that we are including our ID and what's coming next. There's another plus sign. And let's send our project name. So I'm going to click name in quotes here. Sorry, name equal and close my quotes. And so I'm going to be sending the actual task name. But what if my task name has spaces in it? So I'm going to use the replace all function. And then first I will tell it what property I'm sending, pro property name, comma, and then look for the spaces. So we have a quote, space, quote, and then replace that space with a plus sign. And then close it out. And we know that we're all good because our done button is blue and our hyperlink is underlined. I've been utilizing database webhooks within my own workflow. This is my opportunities database and this is where I will track project proposals and contracts. If a contract is one, it'll show up here in my create project view. Here I have a sample project already here for you. And you can see that my webhook has a lot of information. I am not just sending the page ID, but I'm also sending the client's name, the type of project, the date the project is to start, um, any related tasks, and so forth. So when I click on my webhook here, it will create a new project. You can see it's filled out the type, the status, the client name, and it's also created two initial tasks for me to work on. So that concludes this week's episode of Fun with Webhooks. Tune in next episode where I will show you new ways to hack your Notion workspace. Until next time, happy building in Notion.